Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Rebel Free. In this video, I am going to explain you about partitioning methods in cluster analysis in the subject of data mining. So basically in cluster analysis, we have four methods, partitioning, hierarchical, density based, grid based. So in this video, let us learn about partitioning. The next video is about hierarchical, then density, then grid and so on. Okay, got it. So first, what do you mean by partitioning? You are dividing the data, right? So here you will have n data items or objects. See data items or objects or sets or data points. Anything means same. Don't get confused. Okay. So you will have n data items or objects and they will be divided into k partitions or paths or clusters or groups. Anything is again same. Okay. Groups or clusters, partitions, paths, anything, anything is okay. same. So here each partition will represent one cluster. Okay. Are you getting it? Each partition will represent one cluster and K is less than or equal to N. That is the size of K should be less than or equal to N. That is the size of each cluster, each individual cluster should be less than or equal to N where N is the total data items. Okay. Got it. So this is about partitioning and when you are partitioning the data you have to follow two rules so what are those two rules means first is each partition should have at least one object that is in each and every partition you are getting k partitions right in each and every partition you have to have at least minimum of one object and each object should belong to only one partition that is if you are having if you are having three partitions let us take k1 k2 k3 three clusters we have then if you are having data point like p3 here you cannot have the same p3 in k2 as well okay one data point or one data object should belong to only one partition got it next sorry no next after uh, this part uh, now the example example is k-means algorithm so now i will tell you the k-means algorithm the working of k-means algorithm and everything. so here you are dividing the data into clusters based on the distance euclidean distance and the centroid values okay so let us understand it with an example here in our example we have 12 values let me zoom in i guess you can see no let me zoom in more more okay okay let it be see total 12 values we have okay 1 to 12 12 values we have so first what we have to do is our main motto is to divide the data into two clusters got it and so each and every cluster will have a centroid see we have two clusters each and every cluster will have a centroid okay got it first initially you have to only assign centroids to these clusters how will you assign centroids to these clusters you can randomly pick up any set from here x and y any ordered pair you can pick like here you can get 185 comma 72 or you can pick this one 182 comma 72 or you can pick 180 comma 70 any randomly any two ordered pairs you have to pick and assign them to k1 and k2 got it so here we have taken the first two 185 comma 72 for the first one and the second one 170 comma 56 for this one okay we have taken two centroids we have assumed two centroids okay so now initially the data is automatically classified the, these two first two rows are automatically classified into k1 and k2 okay so first row belongs to k1 and second row belongs to k2 done so now we have to start doing our clustering process from third row onwards okay 168 comma 60 right third point is so what you have to do is you have to calculate the euclidean distance for calculating the euclidean distance this we have i also explained in knn algorithm and even in coordinate geometry also we have the distance formula under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square distance formula the same formula you are using here right that is only euclidean formula okay you have to calculate the distance from each and every row to the both the clusters centroids okay so ed is equal to under root of x0 minus xc whole square plus y0 minus yc whole square here x0 means the value which you are taking from this table okay y0 means these values weight values x0 means height values and xc and yc are nothing but these centroid values okay now 
k1 so what is k1 185 comma 72 right so x not x not is what 168 168 minus 185 plus what is y not it is 60 minus 72 60 minus 72 whole square you will be getting the answer as 20.8 next k2 for k2 also x0 minus xc whole square 168 minus 170 sorry it is 170 170 whole square plus 60 minus 56 whole square you will be getting the answer as 4.48 got it now you got the distance from this point to both k1 and k2 right so now you have to calculate you have to see which is smaller among these two which is smaller k2 is smaller right so k the value of k2 is small so what you have to do automatically you will be assigning the data point to k2 okay understood so therefore the third row belongs to cluster 2 k2 okay now we have moved data point 3 into k2 next we have to check for data point 4 so before checking for data point 4 we have some other process let us see what is so that. now what we have to do is since we have moved data point 3 into k2 now the centroid of k2 will change initially what is the centroid of k2 initially we have assumed the centroid of k2 as 170 comma 56 right now the centroid will change since we have moved a data point into it and what is the data point that we have moved data point 3 which is nothing but 168 comma 60 now we have to find out the new centroid how you will calculate the new centroid by using the old centroid of k2 what is the old centroid of k2 170 comma 56 and what is the data point 3 168 comma 60 so 170 plus 168 by 2 56 plus 60 by 2 do you will get the k2 that is new centroid of k2 okay now for data point 4 you have to follow the same process which you have followed for data point 3 but here the centroid of k2 will be new one the updated one okay 169 comma 58 okay then you have to find the distance 179 comma 68 data point 4 and k1 is 185 comma 72 as it is and k2 will be updated to 169 comma 58 okay now you have to calculate the distance among both the distances which is the least k1 so data point 4 will belong it belongs to k1 got it so we have sent it to k1 now since we have sent it to k1 the centroid of k1 will change how you will change the centroid of k1 the old centroid that is 185 comma 72 and the new data point 4 which is nothing but this one 179 comma 68 got it by using these two things you will be calculating the new centroid of k1 okay so the new centroid of k1 will be 182 comma 70 now by using this 182 comma 70 you have to do for the data point 5 like that if data point 5 belongs to k1 then k1 centroid should be updated if the data point 5 belongs to k2 k2 centroid should be updated so like that based on the data points you have to do it uh, you have to keep on updating the centroids and calculate okay now after you do the complete calculation i am not doing the complete calculation because it will take lot of time you will get like this for k1 you will get 1 4 except to 2 comma 3 data point 2 comma 3 so data point 2 is initially we have taken into k2 and third we got how it is moving into k2 right so except to 2 comma 3 all the other things will come under k1 only now what we did we have divided the data into two clusters by partitioning the data got it so that is why this will come under partitioning algorithm okay k means algorithm is an example of partitioning algorithm so in the exam if you get uh, about k means or if you get about partitioning first you can write uh, we will be dividing the data in partition in num number of data objects will be divided into k partitions each and every partition should have minimum one data item and each and uh, every data item has to be present in only one partition it has to not get repeated that you can write and then you can write start writing about k-means algorithm by taking this example you did not take the exact values uh, how it is here you can take your own values as well okay so that's all for this video thanks for watching the video till the end if you're still having any doubts let me know in the comment section now uh, in the next video i will explain about the hierarchical clustering okay so that's all let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic till then stay tuned to my channel for more and more such videos